Welcome everyone. I'm back for a limited time only. Hope you get a lot of really good information from this insanely quick session. I want to share what I've learned working with the current MRP products, Tecla Power Fab and Strumis. My focus has been on PowerFab for the past two years, so this presentation will lean heavily on PowerFab. I'm not as well versed in Strumis, I'll admit, but I'm aware that they have similar processes, at least from what I've been told working with clients. Uh, this year, I do hope to become better acquainted with Strumis, time dependent to support our common clients better. For those that may not know me, I've been working 40 years in the steel industry. 16 years in production on everything from heavy industrial and commercial to small commercial, and I've worked with multiple fabricators over the years. 30 years I've been working on the SDS2 product, starting in version 5.3. Uh, 24 years I've been here at Design Data, and I've had several titles and positions. I've worked uh, on some committees with AISC, and I've actually presented some pretty disruptive technology sessions at NACC. Currently, I am in customer success. I like to say I don't know it all, but I'm always eager to learn and to share what I do know, at least what I can remember, as I barely hold on to my sanity and my memory can be sketchy. Anyways... Just wanted to give you a little bit of an idea about myself. Let's move on to my next slide here. And I want to talk about what the goals of this session are. What I want to give to you is a better understanding of how goods, finishes, and piece marks will impact your revisions in Tecla Power Fab and Strumis. I believe the better you understand what's going on behind the scenes, the better you can troubleshoot and avoid a lot of difficulties. I also really want to encourage that communication between the detailer and the fabricator. I mean, we all have an SOP, or most of us do have a standard of practice. I believe we could flesh that out a little bit more with the MRP product for both the fabricator and for the detailer, and even go as far as having fabricators create some seed projects so we get a smoother transition of data coming across. Okay, let's dig into the presentation. I'd like to begin stating that XML files are not all the same. The Tecla Structure XML is completely different format from the SDS2. XML is simply a markup language, an open and closing tags with data in between. Let's move on to KISS. KISS files have served their purpose. They're a great go-to for years, but they're not gonna be developed any further. So for example, the new finishes in SDS2 will most likely not be added to the KISS files. Currently, they're not. Another thing I'd like to bring up is to satisfy the current fabricator demands, you're going to have to move to the PFXS or the BSWX format. PFXS is for Tecla PowerFab, where BSWX is for Strumis. Now, I want to dispel a myth. This PFXS is simply an archive containing the XML file, drawings, and CNC. The PFXS is not a different format. In fact, by default, when you import into Tecla PowerFab, you can see that it's recognized in the list. PFXS, PFXT, which is your Tecla Structures one, and the XML. It's all in that list right there. So why is it important to move to this new format? Well, I've worked with a number of different fabricators. Some of them, actually, I'm trying to get them not to drop SDS2 because they're under the impression, the false impression, that SDS2 cannot give the same data as Tecla structures, which, again, is not true. Now, why is this happening? Well, because I still have detailers sending KISS files out or still using the old file transfer to send out an XML file. And so they're not benefiting from all that data that can now be sent across. So I usually say like 2023 eyes when I would really, the minimum release I would be in right now to send this out. So when you're competing against your, your Tecla Structures detailers, you want to make sure that you can give them that same data. So that's why you want to move up to this PFX. And that's what I'm going to be showing right now. Now, it's not business as usual. In fact, I had one guy telling me that, hey, James, you taught me all this stuff and now you're taking it away. No, not taking it away. But I want you to understand that some of the practices that we did can cause issues. And you're going to see this throughout this presentation. Uh, one of the things is with Strumis, for example, 
If you add or modify things in the bill of material, none of that data is going to come across in that BSWX because Strumus only reads the model data. Now, Tecla PowerFab is different. It reads both the, in the XML, it reads both the model data and it reads the 2D bill of material data. So during import, it does a comparison between the two. And of course, the 2D bill of material will govern. Now, I'm not encouraging you to do a lot of stuff in the bill of material, but there are some cases where it is actually legitimate reasons to go into the bill of material for modifications. That's a 2D bill of material. Now, again, like I said, the BOM governs, and what happens is it's reported in the import log when there is a discrepancy between the two to help people understand what's going on a little bit more. Initial communication between the fabricator and detailer is a must. Again, you're going to hear me talk a lot about this. You really need at the beginning to do a little bit of back and forth testing. Things out of the box don't always work without a little bit of alignment. And that's what we're talking about here with this communication.